This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see that everyone is online and is coming in and joining in. And um, prayerfully, some more will come in as we go along. Uh, today, we got a great lesson. It's very identifiable. Well, it is for me. Um, and I got a couple of questions um, before we jump into the lesson. But uh, why don't we start by opening up in prayer? Um, Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you, dear God, for allowing us to be able to come together one more time. But first, dear God, we say thank you because you woke us up this morning. We thank you, oh God, because you've given us one more chance to get it together. We thank you, oh God, because uh, death could have snatched us on last night, but you said it was not so. And so we say thank you on this morning. Right now, oh God, we come with a made up mind to know more about you. We ask, oh God, that you open up our minds, that we may be able to receive what it is that you would have us to see, to receive, oh God. Give us understanding, oh God. Give us clarity, oh God. Let us be able to help one another, to share, to uplift one another with your word, oh God. And then most of all, oh God, once we've received it and understand it, oh God, that you hide it within our hearts, oh God, that we may not sin against thee, oh God. Right now, in the precious name of Jesus, we say thank you. We thank you, oh God, for all the participants, all of our church school uh, students that come on online and those, the absent part. We say thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so on this morning, um, we have a really great lesson. Uh, I'm, I want to start by reading uh, the lesson. Uh, we have verses, uh, Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9, and then verses 18 to 23, the sower and the seed. I've always loved this particular story. Um, and as you, as we go on, you will see why. So I'm going to ask for um, a couple of volunteers that we read the lesson, and then we'll get into it. And I have some questions, and I hope that y'all came prepared to participate on this morning because I'm looking for some participation on this morning about this word. Amen. Okay. So can I get two volunteers to read the lesson on this morning? Matthew 13 verses one through nine, and then someone can read verses 18 to 23. Uh, nobody came prepared to participate on this morning. Okay, so I'll start off reading. Okay. Oh, go ahead. You can go ahead. Okay. That same day, went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them the many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and very withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Thank you. Do we have one more person to read um, verses 18 through 23? I'll read it, Brenda. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. 
The seed, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but, but, word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred and sixty or thirty times what was sown. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you so much, Evangelist. Um, and our key text is that last uh, verse, verse 23. The seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Okay, so let me just pull up my PowerPoint here because I told y'all I'm excited about this word on this morning. Um, I'm just going to go over a little bit of background and then I have some questions before we actually get into the meat of everything. Um, the parable of the sower. This is what this is known as. Uh, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Uh, this particular passage, the book in itself is Matthew, is written by Matthew. He's also known as the apostle, uh, a.k.a. Levi. Remember, he was um, a tax collector as well. Uh, the audience that Matthew has written to is the Jews. Uh, and he emphasizes the kingdom of God. These are all things that Sister Joni spoke about on last week. So it's just really a little refresher. Um, it's estimated to have been written in 25 AD after the death of Christ. Uh, the location is somewhere in the north of Israel likely near Capernaum and Nazareth and close to the Sea of Galilee. Uh, the characters in this uh, passage is Jesus, the disciples, the multitude, the sower, and the farmer. Okay. Uh, Matthew, this continues off where Sister Joni left off on last week. Prior to this particular text, we see in Matthew uh, chapters 11 and 12 that there was misunderstanding and opposition to Jesus's ministry. Uh, there was a confrontation between the Pharisees and Jesus. Remember last week we talked about that? The Pharisees were always trying to find something to trip Jesus up. They were intent on making sure that they found him guilty of something that was uh, worthy of his death. And they were persistent in what, uh, they, what they were doing. These were the, uh, the leaders of the law, you know, the leaders of the church. And we have to be careful when we are as leaders in the church. And Sister Joni spoke about this last week as well, that we, um, we, we, we don't have compassion for people. We don't look at the needs of people. We just look at the letter of the law and not the intent. We we try to say you broke the rules, but we have no heart. We have no compassion. And um, Jesus was a compassionate man. Jesus cared about the people, you know. And I mentioned this last week as well. They kept telling Jesus about what the law said, what Jesus was doing on the Sabbath. He was healing this and he was doing that. You know, but Jesus said, oh, no, no, no. I trump the law. I trump the law. I am above the law. Don't you know who you're talking to? Recognize who you're speaking to, you know? And every time they tried to trip him up, Jesus had a response for them. Every single time. Jesus had a response. And so in this historical, the historical contents of Matthew 13, Jesus and his disciples were increasingly facing opposition from the religious leaders. Come on. We have some of those, 
you know, and some of us have been guilty of doing that as well. We're leaders, we're, we, we, we're judgmental. You know, we don't look at the situation. We don't look at the person as an individual, you know? And if you say that you have not been guilty at that, at some point, not to say that you do it all the time, then you're, you, you, who you're kidding? You know, it's a reality still in the church today. And as a result, Jesus began teaching in parables. This teaching method was designed to reach listeners on their individual spiritual levels. Come on, we got a church full of people and that people are just not, everybody's not on the same level. That's a reality. You know, we have people that are babes in Christ. We have some that are mature in Christ. We have some that are just there. I don't even know why they're there. But they're, they're, we're all on different levels in the church. No one, you know, church is all on the same level. Uh, Jesus, Jesus's disciples themselves were confused when he taught in parables and asked why he taught this way. And Jesus himself provided them with the explanation found in Matthew 13 verses 10 through uh, 17. And those are the verses that we did not read, but uh, that is where you can find his response to them as to why he taught in parables in this way. Now, here are my questions. I don't know about anybody else. If anybody else uh, ever did this when you were in elementary school, they used to sell seeds. Anybody used to buy seeds where they used to sell in school? Like I know in PS 197, they did it all the time. And we would buy these seeds um, every year and buy all these different packages and I would get a whole bunch of them. Why? Because I would take them to North Carolina to my grandma. My grandma had a garden. She had, you know, uh, she planted different things. We always had something to eat, you know. And so all of these different packages of seeds um, we would get, my mother would, you know, give us the money, we'd take it over to the school and buy the seeds, uh, whether they were vegetables and flowers, different types of flowers um uh to print and they were five cents a pack i remember that i remember that sister kim you say you remember it. it was five cents a pack right um and here's the other thing that we would sit around and um and do you know help grandma with the garden you know during the summer times uh and we actually worked you know <laughs> She she really worked us, you know, in um in those gardens. So here my here's my question: Do we have anybody out there that in the past or still current that likes to garden? They like to grow things, whether it's plants. Um, I have a cousin that lives in Baltimore, and she's posting all the time now about uh, different plants that she um that she um um are growing. And she takes pictures and shows the harvest of which she's take different herbs and, and different vegetables and stuff that she's growing. And uh, my god brother, uh, Keith, uh, sister, Miss Carrie, Miss Carrie Short, um, her son, um, all of a sudden became into this farmer. He moved to um, Pennsylvania, and this is, and he's serious about this, this farming. Um, so do we have anybody out there that likes to plant, likes to garden? What do you like to grow? Tisa says, I have six plants and love them. Okay. Sharina, yes, she has a garden. Okay. All right. So here's the thing. Even though I used to do this as a child, okay, as a young person, as a young a teen, you know, with the, the garden, I'm not trying to grow a doggone thing now because I didn't been there and done that. Um, these little gardens that y'all have in your yards now or on your balconies or terraces, that's all cute and everything. It's a good hobby, but I, no, no, no. I had to actually work, you know? Um, and you see this picture on the right where they're shelling peas. Not only did I have to sit there and shell peas, but I had to pick those peas. And we would have these big bushels, big, you know, uh, barrels of, of peas that we picked the, the evening before because we would do it during the when it starts to cool down in the evening and go out and pick peas or pick, you know, whatever we was doing. Or early in the morning before sunrise, we would go and pick cucumbers 
And um, I remember that um, <laughs> I was picking, we were picking cucumbers and one of my cousins, she lived, she, she was from New York. She was a true city girl. And she came down for the summer that particular year. And we kept telling her, pick the small cucumbers. You know, um, all she knew was that we were going to pick the cucumbers and then that they would weigh them. And that's how we would get um, paid um, to get our spending money. Um, and she kept picking these huge cucumbers. And we kept trying to tell her, no, you got to pick the small ones. Why? Because we were picking for pickles, you know, and cucumbers, as you know, would turn into pickles. And she was so upset and so distraught because they would take the cucumbers and put them in this contraction and shuffle them and all the small ones that would fall down. And those were the ones that they would weigh and that you would get paid for. But because she picked these huge cucumbers, um, she got no money. She wouldn't listen. Um, she was not a gardener. She didn't understand the process. She wouldn't listen and she did not receive the instructions. And so I said all that to say, you know, it's something relatable when you talk about farming or you talk about gardening or growing plants and things like that. And this is what Jesus did. He took a familiar action, a familiar, you know, um, chore, a familiar job to the people to relate, to, to relate what they were doing to the word of God so that they would get a greater understanding of what it is that he was trying to teach. And in this particular story, he talks about four different types of soil, you know, and we're going to talk about those four different types of soil and how they relate to the people of God, how they relate to the, to the church um, and to those, the audience that Jesus was uh, talking to. And these different types of uh, soil that he spoke of was that some fell on the path, okay? Some fell on rocky ground, other seeds fell among the thorns, but still other seeds fell on good soil. So now you have the path, rocky ground, thorns, and good soil. So, but what does all of that mean? As we come to our passage, our first verse, it starts off by saying that same day. What is that same day? It connects this particular passage back to Matthew 12, where Jesus, uh, where opposition to Jesus was mounting. They kept building their case against Jesus. And so we're, we're picking up from where Sister Joni left off last week in our lesson by saying that same day. Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake, <clears throat> okay? So let's picture it. You always hear me say, let's use our sanctified imagination. So picture it, you know, or what was that? Um, the Golden Girls with Sophia would always say, when before she starts the story, she would say, picture it. So come on, let's use our sanctified imaginations and picture it that after he has this confrontation with the Pharisees, the church leaders, he, 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 he goes um, out of the house and he sits by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him. Wherever Jesus went, people were following him. You know, imagine somebody so intriguing that people follow. You know, we like to follow a lot of different things, whether it be sport, sports or um, uh, people that play sports, people in the music industry, crowds go uh, go far to go, you know, hear them or see them. Um, even with this, uh, the Beehive, the, the Beyonce concert, where they were selling tickets, you know, $1,000 a ticket, people willing to pay just to see it. No, but this was something much better. People were following Jesus. He, They were mesmerized by him. Jesus was just different. He stood out. And people recognize that there is something about this man, you know, um, and they followed him. They wanted to hear what it was that he had to say. And so such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. That's, imagine that's how many people just, just following him that he had to go out onto the boat, onto the water 
in order to speak to them. Um, Jesus used the boat as a platform to teach because the crowds were so large. When he spoke, the water gave his voice an amplified effect. Have you ever been like in a hollow place and you speak and you hear echo or it sounds louder? This is how it was when he was out on the lake that he would speak and his voice popped up, uh, bounced off the water that all that were in the crowd were able to hear what it was that he had to say. Verse three, then he told them many things in parables saying, a farmer went out to sow his seeds. Now, we mentioned this before. I know that pastors mentioned it, Sister Joni has mentioned it, uh, talking about a parable. A parable is a short allegorical story designed to illustrate or teach some truth, religious principle, or a moral lesson. And Jesus used parables all the time. The object lessons familiar to audiences were fishermen, farmers, etc., to communicate a spiritual or eternal truth. I remember once when um, with the youth ministry, many, many of you know, I used to be the youth director and um, we would do different things with our young people. And um, one of them was when we were teaching about the parables and these kids were just so funny to me and so we allowed for them to give their own interpretation on the parables uh, and one of the parables that they did well, of course they did the, the sower but the one that was the most funniest to me was um jeray he was playing jesus and it was about the the ten virgins five wise five foolish and then when jesus came back the five wise was still there uh, to receive the bridegroom as he came, but uh, the uh, the five foolish ones they had no oil in their lamp, and so when Jesus came, they went to try to go find you know oil, you know to go into their lamps, and so when they came back, and we would if you look at the sanctuary, they went down those stairs on the side um, door over by where the musicians sit at. And so they were banging on the door. They were banging on the door, you know, saying, Jesus, let me in. Jesus, let me in. And Jeray, you know, opened the door and he slammed the door and said, I don't know you. You know, so it was just something how they understood what the scripture was trying to say to them. And that's what our young people did. And this is what Jesus does. He tells these stories to give them a better understanding of what he is trying to teach, the lessons that he's trying to prepare. And so even uh, the second part of verse three, a farmer went out to sow his seeds. Here we have the characters in this particular story, the sower, okay? The sower is the planter, the one who's doing the planting. And in this case, the sower is Jesus. Those who teach, preach, or bear witness to the word of God. So if you teach the word of God, you're a sower. If you preach the word of God, you're a sower. If you witness to someone about the word of God, you are a sower, okay? So you have to determine, are you a sower? Do you share the word of God? Do you give clarity on the word of God? Do you give understanding about the word of God? Do you teach, preach, or witness? Remember, we all should be his witnesses. So at some point in our Christian walk, we should be sowers. The next part of this parable is the seeds. And the seeds are the word of God. We are sowing the word of God. We are planting the word of God. And the third part, the soil, which is us, the human hearts of humanity, the people. And here's the kick. There's one, there's one planter, there's one sower. I mean, there, there's one type of seed. There's not different types of seed now. There's one type of seed and there's us, but there are four different types of soil um, in which the seeds are being sown in. Verse four, and as he scattered the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. The wayside, the path, uh, seeds that landed here did not grow. 
okay? And we have we know some, you know, situations that no matter how much you preach or teach to some people, it's just not landing. They're on the path. They're on this, some sort of a different path, the wayside. The hard path prevented the seeds from sinking into the soil and taking root. Okay, as you know, when you're planting anything that you got to get it down in the soil and once it gets in the soil and you water it and you nurture it, that it begins to sprout roots in the soil. Um, but this, the, 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 the pathway, they were easily snatched away by birds. This symbolizes people who do not accept or seek God. That's a sad situation. Verse five, some fell on rocky places, the stony ground, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. Verse six, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. The stony ground, the rocky places, the seeds planted here grew, but did not last. The seeds grew shallow roots. They had no depth. Because of this, the seeds were not able to withstand the heat and die. This symbolizes people with shallow faith who are able to grow for a short time, but then their faith withers under pressure. Sometimes we have to look, take a look of why we have such a high turnaround in our churches. We have people that come in, they jump in, you know, uh, they say yes, you know, yes to God, but then they, 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 the word is not taking root in them, you know, and so they die off, they fall off, they leave, they church hop, they go from one church to another church from this place to that place. They have no depth. They have no roots. It's not rooted in the soil. The, the roots are not getting down in there. Take a look at this picture that I have up. You see on the, the highway, we've seen this even out here in the city. You see this where even the sides of the sidewalk sometimes, you'll see like grass coming up or some type of weed coming up, you know, through the, through the concrete. And you wonder how is this growing amongst the rocks? But they don't last. They don't bear any fruit. You know, um, it's shallow. It's shallow. <clears throat> Verse seven. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. Okay, the thorns. The seeds grew in fertile soil but the plants became choked out by the thorns. This symbolizes people who get distracted by the cares and things of the world. Their faith is overcome and lost in the competition for spiritual nutrients and overcrowded life. Come on. Their focus is not on Jesus. Their focus is not on the word. Their focus is not on the ministry. You know, they get choked out. They get distracted by the money, by the cause, by the, 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 the worldly things, materialistic things that they try to gather. And so they get choked and the word doesn't continue to grow within them and they can't be effective in ministry because they're, they're concerned about worldly things. You know, how can I get on TV? Oh, I got my videos, you know, it's being watched by millions of people. But are you reaching anybody? You know, are you growing? You know, or are you being choked out? You know, we don't do what God tells us to do because we're too focused on what man is telling us to do. Choked by the thorns. The thorns are the worldly things, the materialistic things, the things that distract us. <clears throat> Verse eight, 
still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred sixty or thirty times that was sown okay you know sometimes i like to you know you got to say to yourself thank god i'm good soil it fell on good ground the word is rooted in me the word is growing in me i'm flourishing i'm bearing fruit come on can you tap yourself on the chest and say good soil good soil this ground was fertile sufficiently deep and contain the right nutrients so the seeds could grow and bear crops this symbolizes people who accept the gospel understand it and begin to grow spiritually blessing those around them they bear fruit come on they're rooted it's not being choked out by th by by thorns you know and notice that it says 160 or 30 times okay that lets us know that the 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 growth is different in everybody no one grows at the same rate we're all at different levels but we're growing you know we're all bearing fruit some bear a little bit more than others but we're growing we're maturing you know and so when you have good soil even when you have you go and you buy your fruit or your vegetables and you're sitting there picking them and I, I, even when i talked about when we used to pick cucumbers they were different sizes some were really small some were really big you know um some were firm some were soft you know but they were growing they bear fruit their soil was fertile and they were able to produce a crop and so within our churches within the body of christ we have people growing and maturing at different rates some at six some at 100 some at 60 some at 30 you know but we're growing and maturing don't worry about what somebody else is yielding concentrate on your on your roots concentrate on your being nurtured concentrate so that you can bear fruit because it doesn't matter to god as long as we're bearing fruit even when the gifts are being given out we talked about that the talents some had one some had two some had three you know to whom much is given much is required you know so we all grow at different rates <clears throat> verse 9 whoever has he whoever has ears let them hear we hear that statement throughout the new testament uh, especially in the book of revelation that the word is going forth whoever has ears let him hear pay attention listen listen to the word of god jesus was the greatest communicator ever he had a way of connecting with his audience. He was a master teacher and we should strive to mold our ministries, our teachings after the master. That's who we should look to when we're looking at how should we minister to people? How would Jesus do this? You know, there was that saying that people used to do all, you know, say all the time, had it on t-shirts and everything, WW, uh, JD, what would Jesus do? We ought to mold our ministries, mold our teachings after the master. What's the point of saying, you know, allowing your high education, you know, all your degrees to come across the pulpit or come across in your teaching if your audience is not connecting with you, if you can't reach them? You have to be relatable to them. And in order to do that, you know, but if all you're concerned about is uh, uh, displaying, you know, your education, then all you are is an educated fool because you're not reaching the people. 
okay? So we ought to mold our ministries after the master. Jesus was a master communicator. He was able, he knew how to reach people. He knew how to get down and, and, and have a message that was so simple that children could understand, but yes, so profound that, you know, the wisest of men could understand. His audience was able to connect with him because he showed that he understood their culture and their lifestyles. Uh, when I was taking um, religious studies at Hampton, one of the things that I had to do, and I think I shared this before, was that I had to go to different religions and observe and study and write a paper about it. Um, and one of the ones that I went to was um the catholic church you know i have been to a catholic church before uh and it's similar to you know to uh what we you know what we do at some point but as as a child i remember going there going to a catholic church and the kneeling and the standing up and the kneeling and the chanting and the the latin and i didn't really quite connect i didn't cr really quite understand but then when I went as a student, um, I was surprised. And this was before All Saints had closed down on Madison Avenue. And when I went in, I saw them with the instruments, the drums, the keyboards and everything. I looked in the pews and they had hymn books. I opened the hymn book and it was, you know, hymns that we sang. It wasn't the same hymn book, but it was hymns that we sang in our churches. And then when, as the service went on, they still had the incense and still had, you know, some of the kneeling and everything. But they, uh, when um, the music came on, they were singing gospel music. One of the songs that they sung, which I love, um, was the prayer of J Jabaz. And I'm just like, I'm like, wait a minute, what happened here? This is not like the Catholic church that I remembered coming to um, as a child. And afterwards, uh, one of the things that I had to do was um, interview the leader or the leadership of that particular religion. And I brought that point up to, um, to um, the pastor there. And he said that what they do now is whatever community that they are in, that the Catholic Church is in, they try to relate to that community. So they tried to assimilate within that community. And this is Harlem, you know, where there's a whole lot of us, you know, that are kissed by the sun. And so they uh, mold their ministry, they mold their service um, to identify with those in the community. And I just thought that was just, that's exactly what Jesus would do. Come on now. This is exactly what he would do. He would relate to the people in their community, their lifestyles, their culture. We have a culture, a, a background of rhythm and blues, gospel, you know, and they relate to the community. And I just thought that that was something awesome. There were some of the things that went on there. Um, uh, I still got choked up by the incense, but it was just something. You know, and it, it gave me something to write about and something to identify with. Okay, so his audiences, his audience knew something about how a farmer would walk the ground scattering seeds. The parable describes one sower sowing one kind of seed. He wasn't playing sowing, throwing tomatoes here, cucumbers there, you know, uh, pepper here. It was one seed, one kind of seed, which fell on four different kinds of soil. Okay, so let's be clear about that. It's just one word, the word of God. Nothing added, nothing taken away. That is what we're sowing, one kind of seed. There, were, um, there weren't different seeds. I, I mentioned that, no tomatoes here and cucumbers there, watermelons there, no corn over there one kind of seed he sowed one word the sower was a generous sower who sowed seeds liberally he wasn't stingy 
He didn't just share the word when he felt like it. He sowed generously. And the seeds did not receive the same reception, even though all the seeds were good seeds. All the seeds were good seeds. Even the plants that grew had various um, yields. And we talked about that. We're all at different levels. We grow at different paces. So here's the thing. When we sow seeds and it doesn't fall on good ground or it doesn't take root in somebody, don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Hang in there. Don't be discouraged if you do not see results as you faithfully teach, preach, or witness to the word of God. Come on, Timothy says, preach in season and out of season. Don't give up. Keep sowing. Keep preaching. Keep teaching. You know, uh, you may not see the results right now. But keep on going forward. Jesus faced much rejection and opposition as he faithfully ministered. Sooner or later, every believer will face rejection, exclusion, or criticism. It's part of the task. If Jesus had to face it, what makes you think that you won't face it? Okay? You must know that if you are faithful to what God has called you to do, and if just one hears and receives the word of God, the effort was worth it all. Come on, we're talking, we're talking about parables, right? Remember the 99 and the one? Jesus left the 99 just to go get the one. So if one receives it, it's worth it. You ought to rejoice for the one that comes. Because when one comes in, comes into the fold and receives the word of God and receives salvation, all of heaven rejoices. We talked about that before. Why do we clap when someone comes to, to join the church? Why do we say hallelujah when someone comes for baptism as a candidate for baptism? Why do we clap? Because heaven is rejoicing over one. That's one that the enemy can't have. And we, just, we gotta get them one at a time. Jesus does not fault the farmer for where the seeds fell or whether they become fruitful. Do your job. Jesus is not blaming you if you are faithful. Do your job. Stay faithful. Stay in the word. Stay preaching. Stay teaching. Stay witnessing. Stay sharing the word of God. So if Jesus doesn't fault you, neither does God condemn the messenger when sinners reject the word of God. He's not condemning you. You did your job. You were faithful. Stay in the word. We will all experience both failure and success in our ministries. Not everyone will receive the word that you sow. It's God's desire that all will be saved, but the reality is that they all won't. We know this because we read the end of the book. We already know what the end of the story is. All will not make it. But you be faithful. Do what you're supposed to do. Those who share the gospel should stay focused on the task, refusing to be discouraged or personally offended when others reject. Now, I know that this is hard because we have feelings. We're emotional sometimes. And so we get hurt and offended when people don't receive what it is that we have to offer or what it is, the message, or what it is, our ministries, or what God is telling us, showing us to do. There are people that are going to reject you. That is a reality. They rejected Jesus. They will reject you, okay? But stay focused. Every response to the word of God reflects the condition of his or her heart and um, towards God. God expects every believer to grow in the field in which God has placed them. Wherever God has plants, planted you, wherever he has sowed in you, he expects you to be faithful. Stay focused. Do your job. We like to say stay in your lane. Okay, so let's stay in our lane. Where God has planted us. You know, you know, if he's planted you and called you to teach, teach. 
if he's planted you and called you to to preach preach if he's asked you to be an evangelist evangelize if he asked you to be a missionary serve wherever he has planted you serve to the glory of god knowing that your faithfulness will pay off one day come on i'm working i'm doing i'm staying faithful i'm trying i get hurt sometimes i get knocked down sometimes but here's the difference between how you get hurt and someone that had no root gets hurt because we have root we're able to revitalize and to continue to grow and continue to bear fruit my cousin sent me a picture of a pear tree that my uncle planted years and years ago and the the, the tree has stopped bearing fruit but once he started nurturing it again he sent me a picture and said hey cuz you remember this tree i'm like you got to be kidding me that tree is bearing fruit yeah because somebody started nourishing it started taking care of it started watering it you know uh and so the fruit started to bear bear fruit so we get tired sometimes we get hung down but don't give up stay focused stay rooted don't let somebody uproot you snatch your roots up because as long as you got roots in the soil come on as long as the soil is fertilized as long as the soil is watered come on you'll, you'll sprout up again you'll grow again so just stay focused don't let rejection steer you away no you're good ground you're good soil don't be like the ones that thorny would soil you the 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 path or the stony you know remain good soil don't let them uproot you so there were different responses and different levels of readiness to god's word the path some fell on the path some fell on rocky ground others fell among thorns uh still um other seeds fell on good ground and let me tell you about some the, some of those that fell amongst thorns everybody in the church is not saved everybody in the church is not doesn't mean you good look at the religious leaders the pharisees they did not mean jesus not one bit of good so there's some thorns around you stay away from the thorns because if you don't, they'll choke you out. They will choke you out. Stay away from them thorns. Those that every time you turn around, they're coming to you to gossip. Stay away from them thorns. Those that are trying to get you to be a part of their cool to uproot the deacons, or uproot the, the pastor. Stay away from them thorns. You don't want them to choke you out. You good if you're good ground, stay away from them thorns. Okay? People respond differently because they are at different places of understanding and acceptance of the good news of Jesus Christ. We're all different. That doesn't make you any better because you're growing, you know, a whole bushel, you know, of greens, and someone else just has a fruit, you know, fruit uh, beans. That's right. That's all right. That may be now, but you don't know what's going to happen next season. What are they going to bear fruit next season? What fruit are they going to bear next season? Okay. Verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the soil, the sower means. So here Jesus comes now and he begins to explain what the parable means. All right. Uh, the ones, uh, some fell along the path. They hear the word of God but they do not understand it. The birds come up and they snatch it away. The birds represent the evil one. Come on, don't let state Satan come and snatch that word away from you before you have a chance to take root. That's what happens on the path. You're on a path somewhere. You don't understand the word, um, uh, but they don't understand it. They hear it, they don't understand it. They don't understand it because as the sower began to sow, the birds came along and ate up the seeds before they were able to be to to uh to grasp root verse 19 when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it the evil one comes and snatches it away 
what has been sown in their heart. This is the seed. Uh, this is the seed sown along the path. Come on, you come to church, and the enemy distracts you. you you're not receiving the word. You're allowing the, the evil one to come and snatch the seed away from you. You haven't received the word of God. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 20. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. They receive it. They, you know, they got excited. Yeah, they came into the church. They received the word. Verse 21. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. I'm leaving this church. Those are the ones that get the church hurt. I'm leaving this church. I can't stand this church. You know, these people in this church, these are the ones that never truly grow and mature in faith. They had no root. They had no depth. They are receptive to God for a short period before losing what that they heard. Sometimes we come in, you have uh, new converts come in, they're all excited. They get, you know, they get caught up into the service, the singing, the preaching and everything. They get excited about it, but they don't take root. They're not in church school. Come on now. They're not studying the word of God. They're not in Bible study. They're not taking root. They have no depth. They're shallow. You know, they don't come to anything. They think that, you know, coming to a church on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock in our case now, that that's enough. No, you're not, you're not getting root. You're not getting down into the root of the word. The soil is not deep. It's not moisturized. It's not fertilizing. They get excited for a short period of time. And that's why we don't take someone who just walked in the door and say, I'm going to make you president of the of the usher boy. I'm going to make you youth director. They just got here. They have no root. It has nothing to do with, you know, how long somebody really been here. But do you have any depth? Do you have any roots? Before we start throwing them into ministries, throwing them into things, you know, and they can't swim yet. And we're just throwing them out there. Come on. That's why we have new converts class, new members class. That's why we have them to come to church school. That's why we have them to be into Bible study so that they can begin to take root, that, that, that they don't fall away quickly because they get discouraged or because they get church hurt. Come on. And we all know there's no hurt like church hurt, okay? But how do you withstand it? because you have roots, you have depth. Yeah, you get upset. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you wonder, why do I keep at this? Because you have roots, you have depth. You're not in shallow ground. You're not allowing someone to come because you're in shallow ground and just pluck you up and throw you away. Come on now. <clears throat> Verse 22. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfaithful. I have people, they, they, I've seen them, they're, they're preaching so that they can get the Cadillacs or the Lexus, so that they can have status and a title, you know, trying to get at the money, trying to get at the house. Come on, we all seen this, all right? You're supposed to be a teacher, a preacher, a leader of God's people. And all you're concerned about is what you can get out of it. Trying to bleed the church. You riding around in a Cadillac and Mother May have, Mother May over there, you know, she's standing on the bus stop for an hour waiting for a bus after service ended. And you couldn't even go by to take that car that God blessed you with to say, Mother, let me give you a ride home. You're too concerned about yourself. You let your title and your position get to your head. Come on. This is not about your title. Leadership is not about titles. 
your position. Come on. It's about service. How do you meet the needs of people? Ministry, meeting the needs of people. That's the definition of ministry, meeting the needs of the people, not what you can gain out of it. Not how much money you can get out of it. You know, they're not paying me. You know, I and well, I've said this before. People that walk up to me and tell me that's what I get paid for, I got to let you know you don't pay me. No, no. You could not pay me for what I do. What you give me is a tip. And I'm appreciative of it. But don't come to me and tell me about what I get paid to do because you're about to be told because you're meeting a need. You see a need there and you and your first priority and concern is how can I meet this need? And when you're faithful in meeting the need, when you're faithful in the ministry, God will bless you and you will have an abundance because you were faithful. You didn't do it for the title. You didn't do it for the position. You didn't do it for the money or the cars or the house. You know, I, I, I heard a preacher say, I didn't come here to work. I came here to retire. Are you kidding me with that? Come on, needing a need. So when you take these positions in your ministries, Make sure that it's because you're trying to meet the needs of God's people. And when you meet the needs of God's people, God will richly reward you and bless you above all that you will ever need. Come on, these people uh, uh, the, amongst the thorns, they allowed the cares of this world to crowd Jesus out of their lives. Their hearts are, are already full of the cares of worldly interests. Their hearts are preoccupied with the world's lust, wealth, and materialistic cares. They have worldly desires and ambitions and get entangled with the distractions of this world. A dividend alliance, um, I'm sorry, dividend, a divided alliance prevents the maturing of spiritual values if you're focused on money you can't mature in spiritual values matthew 6 24 no one can serve two masters either you will hate one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money come on i'm gonna leave it at that <clears throat> oh one second not everyone who hears uh, the good news message of Jesus Christ will receive it and accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. It's a reality. Some have a heart and heart. Some are contaminated by other people. Come on, we have people in the church, you know, that they could grow, but they've been contaminated by some others. They're distracted or they're shallow. You know, so those are the things that prevent us from receiving the word in accepting Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. Verse 23, our last verse. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who bears, I'm sorry, who hears the word and understands it. We don't all understand it at first, okay? Uh, but when you become good soil, when you continue to be fertilized, when you continue to, to be watered, you get understanding, you get clarity. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. These are those who have genuinely accepted the word of God in their lives and live by his word. These are the ones who are spiritually healthy and mature. These are the ones growing and developing in the Lord and bearing fruit. Not all at the same rate, some mature faster than others. <clears throat> okay, so again, we talk about, I'm just drilling it in. Some fell on the path. Some fell on rocky ground. Others fell on among thorns. Still, 
other seeds fell on good ground. The difference in the response was with the soil, not the word, not the seed, not the sower. It was the soil. That was what makes the difference. It was the same seed sown by the same sower. <clears throat> Uh, God's word. Uh, God knows the hearts of people and knows who will respond in a positive manner to his word. He knows who will reject him altogether. Here are the questions. How has God's word taken root in your life and what type of soil are you? Can we get any response to that? How has God's word taken root in your life? And what type of soil you are you? Anybody? Come on, we got, is there any good ground out there? Is there any good soil out there? I've thrown out the so I've sowed the seeds. Did it land on good soil? Did it land on good ground? Okay. May I speak? Uh, good morning. Good morning, um, uh, Sister Brenda. Great, uh, great teaching today. Um, it sure pricked my heart because um, for me, I'm going that I'm saying um, is in love and loving we use as an action because that's an action word. So God was love. So for me, um, the good soil for me that's growing in me from God is loving others. And then, you know, not just only my family, but people that's not in my family outside, whether it be at work, whether it be in my community, and it's challenging. So, you know, I just thank God for that spirit of love in me and that's taken root and continue to grow as I walk in his word and learn his word and learn how he walks. And this is a good lesson showing the parable of the good soil and where's that seed falling so thank you um for the lesson brenda sister brenda god dean foreman i'm sorry god bless you sister joni you had something yes i'd like to consider myself not bragging to be that seed that fell on good soil where mm -hmm. i produce crop this lesson um was presented excellent but it reminded me of discipleship because when mm. you're discipling others, you are planting seeds. Yes. And there are many times and I, discipleship for me is a love. I, I love it. I love it. I don't know why, but it's, it's a love for me to disciple others. And sometimes I find myself when you're discipling, it falls on different seeds. And, and some people you think, well, I've been sitting here for five years and they haven't grown now. At that point, you pray and ask God, do you stay with that seed, that seed, and it may not grow? Because some of them will not. Some of them won't receive the word. They come to church and they leave and it's, you know, it's just that it won't grow. And there's some that if you stay with and keep pouring into, that seed grow. So there are times, Brenda, when we don't know the difference whether we have to be able to see it through God's eyes to see I got a family I'm dealing with and I consider that's not one seed but a six because if mom gets saved and dad gets saved guess what family comes in and gets saved but um excellent lesson so I saw it from a lens of discipleship and it helped me a lot amen yeah. thank you yeah everyone grows at a different rate you know right. we just can't get frustrated yes go ahead I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Awesome, awesome lesson. Awesome lesson that really touching me. And humbly speaking, how I feel that I have good soil is because my ears are open to receiving God's word, to understand God's word, to learn, to continue to learn his word, and to just be thoughtful, be kind to people, but most importantly, to stay faithful and obedient to God. And I can accept, you know, good soil to accept constructive criticism such as mainly a spiritual, coming from a spiritual eye, to accept that criticism and still love that person, loving my enemies more than I ever did and pray for them. So that's how I know I've developed, 
I may not have had it from birth, but I know it, it, it is, I think it was planted in me from birth, but I didn't receive it. I didn't understand it. But I thank God for where I am now to, to say, humbly speaking, yes, I am good soil. Yes. Amen. Praise, praise God. Praise God. Come on. Any more good soil you out there? Here's the key is to make sure that because you are good soil, stay away from them thorns. Stay away from them thorns because them thorns hurt. I remember one night we were, um, as kids, we were playing hide and go seek. And um, if you've ever been in the country, good God Almighty, it gets dark for real down there. I mean, you could actually put your hand out in front of your face and still can't see your hand. That's how dark it gets. And it was one night we were, we were playing. And I remember I was trying to get back to the house, which was home base. And I was running, running in the dark, right? And I was saying, yeah, that rose bush should be right about right across my thigh. I still got the scars from that, that rose bush across my, th uh, across my thigh. Them thorns hurt for real, okay? And then sometimes they get stuck in you. And you can't pull them out, you know, like you want. You got to go digging and trying to get them out. And sometimes you got to let it rise. And grandma will put something on it, you know, to, to make it come up to the surface so that it can come out of you. You know, stay away from them thorns. Stay away from them gossiping people. Stay away from those who 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 always complaining, always criticizing, have nothing good to say about the church, have nothing good to say about the pastor, you know, stay away from them thorns because you're good ground. Okay. And you don't want to get choked out by them thorns. All right. Um, so continue hello. to grow. Yes. Oh, hello. I'm Minister Hayes. I personally, yes, can, I, I personally cannot say whether I'm with good soul or bad soul, only God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit can judge that for me. But I do know one thing. If you do his command, and if you do the will that he give you, one day he will judge you and he will let others know that was an obedient child. And that's what I live for. And I always let somebody know about Christ Jesus. And that's all I can do and just wait on him and his blessing toward my life. Thank you. Okay. okay, anyone else before we turn it over to um, our superintendent? Um, like I said, there's one seed. That's the, that's the word of God. And if you are a believer and you witness God's word, you don't have to be a teacher, you don't have to be a preacher, but you, we are all his witnesses. And if you are a witness, you ought to be able to sow seeds. Just Amen. one seed. The word of God. And don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't be faint. Stay faithful. You know, stay faithful to the end. You know, because you don't have to be, God doesn't require us to be the greatest. He doesn't require us to, you know, to be well known or have our names up in lights. That's not a requirement of God. That's a requirement of man, not a requirement of God. God requires us to be faithful. And I want to be counted as faithful because when I meet Jesus and I see him face to face, come on, the words that I want to hear is well done, thy good and faithful servant. One seed, you know, four different types of soil, four types of ground, you know, strive to be good ground, strive to be good ground, continue to grow, continue to mature, and don't look at somebody else's, what someone else has got, where someone else is at, you know, how far along someone else is. Everyone grows and matures at different rates, okay? So just remember that. Uh, Deaconess um, Hill, are you there? Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you, Dean. Foreman, thank you. God bless you. This is an awesome lesson. The sower and the seed. 
I remember that scripture in Revelation where it says, um, he that has an ear, let him hear. All right, all right. And we have to listen. We have to sincerely listen and earnestly the word of God. Uh, we want understanding and we want uh, 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 to grow in this message that Jesus left for us. If we don't, there are consequences for disbelieving. For when we hear the word, we should, but a lot of us don't grow in the Lord. And then as disciples, we are to make other disciples to do good work. <laughs> and in the church where it's so much going on, where it is not godly, but uh, not to be the judge because Jesus said he'll be the judge. So we're just going to study that word, God's word, and not man. And don't be distracted like Dean Foreman uh, was emphasizing on. So uh, uh, Jesus said he's going to come back for his church. <laughs> and it is not our church. It is not our church. It's God's church. So we thank you, church school, for your obedience to teach the word of God. And uh, Dean Foreman had asked, what kind of soil are you? What kind of soil are you? I just want to also thank the ones that um, donate financially uh, to the church school. Thank you, whether it's by um, Giblify or on Sunday morning, envelopes are available from the ushers. So you can do it either way. They have uh, envelopes for you. Also, we have our books in. And it's being announced that the books are available, not on first Sunday, but the other um, Sundays, they are available, and the fee is $10. This is just a minute amount. The church school is picking up the balance on these books. They are expensive. In fact, they're almost $25, $25, but they are worth it. There's no price we can put on God's word. So we just want to thank you. Dean Foreman, you have any um, announcements? Uh, no, you want I just want to yeah, just remind everyone that service begins at 10 a.m. on tomorrow. We're in our summer schedule. Um, we are in dress down, but um, comfortable, but respectable. Um, and I know pastor's not on, but I forgot to um, acknowledge uh, Deacon Brian in his place. If Deacon Brian had anything to say, um, and then we can um, continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you also to um, Deacon Brian. He brought a word to the night. Thank you, Deek. Um, now we'll be reading our prayer on page 399 in our book, Lord of the Harvest. May we remain faithful to the task of proclaiming the gospel. May we not prejudge potential hearers. Instead, we trust that our spirit will work to bring others to faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thought to remember, producing kingdom fruit is not optional. Amen. God bless you. Pray to see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. service. God bless. Thank you, Dean Foreman. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Are you dis did you dismiss? Yes. Let the words okay. of my mouth, meditation of my heart.
be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you. Amen. See everyone on tomorrow. Amen. Great lesson, Sister Dean Foreman. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank God you. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Brenda. Great lesson. Dean Foreman. Got to get used to saying Dean Foreman. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.